Firstly, what is engineering? So I was just running through my slide. What is engineering? So I have defined engineering in a different way. That is, engineering is somewhere it is sandwiched between maths and science. So what I have put as engineering as engineer stands for everyday newly generating ideas, neatly executing everybody's requirements. So this is how we talk about engineering. Means. In engineering, if you want to become an engineer, it is not like school where we are learning something, by hearting something and writing something and getting our results. But here, every day we have to keep thinking around the society, what is going on, where the problem is and what, what we can do for that as the part of an engineer and what is our role. It is not just uh, doing for the human being, even for the other beings, because it is not just concentrating on humans, even the environment is very, very important, environmental control, even the other uh, animals, very important, is it not? And even the birds today we have seen, every other being we have to take care. That is why it is written as everybody's requirements. It is not just re restricted to a human requirement. That is why we say engineer stands for everyday newly generating ideas, neatly executing everybody's requirements. And this is the role of every engineer. Next. Now, let us see what is this uh, climbing the uh, learning curve because uh, we always say hey, every day we are learners. We, are, we cannot say that I know anything, everything. The moment we, saw the, we say I know everything, then my growth is over. That is the last day. That is, no, nothing can be stopped. And we always know whenever changes are there, it is going to perish because one change leads to another change. One change leads to another change, another change leads to another change. Means if you am getting a change from the old car to new car, means the old car has perished, then a new car has come. Means changes, changes will keep perishing. Then only the changes will keep moving. That is why we say the changes are a continuous process. Therefore, it is our duty to ensure that we are also... <coughs> learning every day to give whatever possible contribution to this society to make them have a much more better life. That is the uh, <coughs> role of every engineer today. So for every simple problem, there is a simple answer. That is what we say. For every simple problem, there is a simple answer. And most of them are wrong. Why means the research, whenever I talk about research, it is not only just verbally telling or connecting something and showing. But we should know whether we can express it in numbers. Is it not? Unless we express it in numbers, is it okay? We always tell the knowledge is meager because whatever we do, there should be a consistency. Unless consistency is there, our research may perish very fast. That is why we say, whenever I have done something, if I tell, most of our engineers will ask, have you developed any mathematical equation for that work? Unless the mathematical equation is substituted for the work, we generally say the research may not be extraordinary. Even if it was a fact with even Maxwell, because Maxwell could find the displacement current, but he was finding it very difficult to write an equation for that. So most of the places, in most of the conferences, he was not, uh, his work was not recognized much because he could not give the equations. Finally, uh, somebody else came forward and he said came forward and wrote equations for him. These are all the histories what we are seeing. That's why we say the knowledge has scarcely progressed whenever you cannot measure it. Is it not? That is why we say whenever we do something, the measurement should also go parallelly. And of course, today we are doing everything on simulations and writing a mathematical model is going to be the best part in any research of engineering. Yes. Next. Now, how to, how to start about the uh, research? So research, the central task of an engineer, engineer always has to design, design something where creativity and analysis means first we have to analyze whatever is existing, because straight away I cannot tell I'm going to do something. This college I'm going to improve on the first day, I cannot tell when I join a college, because first I have to study what is the existing condition in the college, what is going on. Therefore, all these aspects has to be considered. Therefore, the task of an engineer is to design means first he has to make a study, that is analysis and creation. Yes. Now, creation of 
the ideas is it okay from right from the which one uh, right from the uh, uh, requirement the requirement for bringing up a new product but not just the new product but it should also reach the common man that is more important because unless it reaches the common man uh, we cannot say that research is very very successful because that's what we are lacking today much that is why we say even the cost cost counts because not just that's where we should have somewhere the trade off uh, between the product and the cost and the accuracy because we know if you have to be more and more accurate of course the cost will keep on changing is it not so that is why now first we have to line up all this for the design what are the variables required and how to conceive that idea into a model and what are the uh, things required what is its cost and what kind of uh, <coughs> what uh, what kind of people in the society it is targeted or whether it is the human being or whether it is something else that is how it goes so specify so we have to specify uh, in detail whatever the solution is needed so and also we cannot tell mine is the only method which can work we should also see alternative solutions because only one way you cannot tell otherwise today we would not have kcl and kvl because to find the same power in a resistor i can use kvl or kcl therefore there may be alternative solutions but under what conditions this can be used and what conditions something else can be used this is how it keep going so two major thinking should come one is called as the analysis the other one is called as the uh, synthesis because we always know we engineering is not about the linear process but it is always an iterative process and a creative process so this is how our uh, engineering goes it it cannot say i will have one particular solution in one shot therefore always if you see every day there is a new new research going on iterative iterations are going on and you are trying to improve upon from 4g to 5g 5g to 6g all are iterative processes only so we cannot tell exactly this is going to be the last process that is why we call it as iterative process and of course linear thinking in engineering may not be so good so we always go with non linear thinking that may help us to create new new ideas okay so now for an engineer what trend all is required both mathematical hardware as well as software these are the combinations by which you can bring up a better research so now the first tools the engineering troubleshoot the first tools the first tools is always we say our eyes ears and hands because first we should see something because without seeing we cannot talk that is why we say first we have to see the john observe the irregularities in the environment so let listen to whatever it said then at least gather the information organizing the information always we should see some thief is there that is why we say uh, we should think like a detective that is what we say i always tell every new one is like a which one uh, <coughs> a thief therefore we have to bring that out therefore we should act like a detective therefore make a diagnosis and attack that problem and see that wherever possible because that may not be a, a, a good solution sometimes we may can we can improve upon it therefore retry whenever it is necessary that is how it goes so now what are the important aspects to achieve in engineering first is because i am from the engineering background i am little bit into my engineering therefore the first one is mathematics because without mathematics i don't see any engineering uh, person is going to be very successful and basics of every engineering subject because without knowing basics it is not like uh, pure computer science where you learn some language at the age of 40 also 50 also but if you i am from electrical or electronics uh, what happens unless you know the basics you cannot develop anything that's why the basics of every engineering subject and hardware development software development and you should also have the management skills because this is also equally important so doing all this is not important but even management skills also helps us in <coughs> bringing out the better things that is how all this put all these things put together we can say that engineering goes with mathematics that's why we saw maths in engineering so i put uh, maths as many amazing techniques helping solutions in engineering so now that's how i put maths in engineering 
now the match where it is where it is used the question is where it is not used as it not example it is used in electrical electronics uh, in the form of differential equations linear algebras control systems <coughs> power systems all this antennas power electronics then civil mechanical engineering computer science gaming theory today data mining artificial intelligence so today the main mathematics required is linear algebra linear algebra probability theory and multivariate calculus because everyone knows today we are working on this machine learning and artificial intelligence all those things so today we are having something called as a linear algebra which is the one which is i i, I feel that after some years it, it may replace even integration and differentiation because the entire deep learning or any uh, machine learning today are all going with a uh, linear algebra that is the vector analysis is going to play major role and probability theory that's why we suggest today most of the students in engineering to study these subjects because that may be the future <coughs> oh, yes this is i think uh, uh, some of the things now every day we are telling uh, uh, one after the other new new mathematics is coming to help us out so first we should see what is a transform and second is why to transform how to transform what happens when we do a transform then do we need an inverse of a transform and what are the incarnations and various avatars of this transforms and of course application of this transforms so this is the first question what is what is coming because when a student enters engineering first year you'll be studying one set of equation second year something else third year something else in the final year how to use all this and uh, bring it as a product or a project so like that we have all this so how one transform improves upon another so i have taken a, a simple example how the transforms are going to be helpful so it's a very simple equation integration of 1 by 1 plus x square dx if you look at the curve the curve keeps on going up to infinity at both sides so where it ends we don't know if you plot this we don't know where this curve is going to end finish means there may be information at the far end also a little information but there is no end because 1 by 1 plus x square it keeps on going so almost the solution becomes impossible because it keeps on moving 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 and of course it is coming down but where it ends we don't know that is the problem that is why almost impossible so what you have to do so if it is if you don't know where is the end so we we transfer the problem to somebody else that is why suppose we were to transform from the problem so why because i am finding it difficult where this curve is going to end the curve may be having some good information maybe some text information some image information any kind of information can be uh, embedded in this curve because that is important therefore what we do is a simple transform we do in that put x equal to tan theta so what will happen when i put x equal to tan theta because minus infinity to infinity becomes minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 and finally what happens the result is very simple it becomes a simple rectangle between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 now both the ends are seen so what i could not get from the initial level now i could get a simple area by which now i know the ends that is why what i could not see properly in the previous case now we could transform it into the <coughs> trigonometry and we could get very easily the result that is how finally we can say the area of this is going to become pi uh, that is how the transform has helped us to know what exactly is happening otherwise in the raw case we would have lost some information yes so what is transform it is an alternate representation or presentation of a problem now provides one more view of a problem because you you should not look at a problem at one end we can look at it different ends therefore it may provide one or more views of a problem allows for people to understand the domain context or reckon with with better facts and yes of course representation and for change of better and make it easy is it not these are all the things what are going to happen so first there are two domains domain 1 and domain 2 whenever i transform i transform from one domain to another domain 
so whenever i transform from one domain to why why i should go to domain 2 can i not solve in domain 1 only if the answer is going to come in domain 1 only i need not have to go to domain 2 but whenever i don't get a solution i have to move into domain 2 by changing the variables therefore <coughs> what you want to be in domain 2 is it not what you want to solve or are we seeking a solution or just an interpretation because sometimes we want a solution sometimes we want to understand this therefore a transform is nothing but a new representation of a problem that is how it goes so topics i am not going to tell all this because uh, uh, these are all differential equations laplace transforms fourier transform because we started our life with any representation of the system with differential equations then we found that the, as the as the order of the uh, equation increases or the system increases because if i have only uh, r and l circuit resistance and inductance i may have a simple differential equation but if i have two resistors two inductors three capacitors then the system uh, order increases it is going to become difficult to find solution through the classical differential equation therefore because you have to find particular solution homogeneous solution all those things it takes a lot of over time therefore we transform it into laplace so in the laplace any differential equation can be converted into a polynomial so it becomes much more simple and coming to the fourier transform we want to do everything in the frequency domain and z transforms because laplace transforms are good for the continuous time systems but today we are in the digital world therefore we want everything in the in digital uh, evaluations therefore the best transform for today's world is z transforms of course finally we are coming to my topic that is my research area that is my uh, this one wavelet transforms so wavelet transforms is playing a very beautiful role today and of course linear algebra uh, probably it may replace many things in future that is why the linear algebra is the final one so these are the things what i now of course uh, first of all whenever i because what we do is generally first any system should get a signal so our single first idea is understand the signal what kind of signal has come whether it is periodic or non periodic whether it is repetitive deterministic or whether it is random we don't know is it not so first understanding the signal is more important then only you should transform so straight away you should not transform somebody uh, that is why first understanding the signal second is system are we building a system where linearity is very important stability is important time invariance is important and of course singularity singularity is means <coughs> which may vanish suppose if i say uh, impulse function or a step function a step function if it is differentiated is constant if it is differentiated it becomes a impulse function impulse function if i differentiate it will not it will vanish so such kind of functions we call it as the singularities non singularity suppose exponential function e to the power t you just differentiate e to the power t or sin theta it will become cos theta cos theta again differentiate 100 times you differentiate guarantee it will never die so such kind of functions are non singular functions singularity functions generally will vanish with uh, <coughs> which one successive differentiation so why the singularities functions are important because we know that impulse suppose i take a lightning it is an impulse function suppose i want to switch on from one level to another level then that is called as a step function and anything which changes linearly with time is a ram function so these are all coming under singularity functions but where it is very importantly used just take an example of a aircraft when it starts <coughs> when it starts it has a take off a take off is like a ram function then it steadies when it becomes steady it is a step function but because it goes on to the uh, space it can be subjected to lightning or any other thing that is a impulse function therefore a aircraft should be tested for all this so those functions are nothing but singularity functions that is step ramp and impulse now again when it is going to <coughs> land again it has to have a ramp function coming down therefore all these are very very important in designing your systems and it can be simulated inside the laboratories generally non singular function will will not vanish so very simple example what we get on our socket today our sinusoidal wave which will never die in you exponential it will never die because exponential is such a powerful function why means whenever you make solution in mathematics the shape should not change very very important 
if the shape changes the solution is going to be a problem that's why sinusoidal functions even today is such a powerful function because differentiation of sin theta is cos theta which cos theta is nothing but again sin theta only because it is shifted by 90 cos theta is sin theta shifted by 90 so the shape is not changing that is why these functions are also equally important so z transform is used for discrete function so i'll just come to one uh, one uh, uh, what do you call uh, the application uh, image compression because uh, i worked on uh, a video compression so now on the image compression what is image compression we have today enormous data enormous data and our mobile is there which may not be able to take our computer is there our memories are limited the channel memories are limit the channel is limited so so many limitations are there today we cannot put all the raw data into our system because it takes hell of the memory that is why compression becomes a very very important aspect as on today and of course we know there are thousands of methods coming every day new new methods are coming but how to advance upon that method and every day we can keep on improving that is how the compression is an important uh, <coughs> parameter in today's research therefore i have given one example uh, just like that uh, see the elephant elephant is like a big data and i have shown a needle so this image compression is like putting that elephant through that needle that big data should go inside that needle but it is not going to be easy but you have to somehow ensure that the data goes inside that is why we call it as the hard work that is compression work is not going to be so easy we have to develop methods that is why we say compression is like pushing an elephant through the needle of the eye of the needle the so but it is a very hard process that's where you have to develop many methods and today you have jpeg mpeg all those compression standards have come jpeg has come for the image mpeg has come from the video so now there are many transforms by which you can look at it so i have taken a, a simple example so these are all called as the transforms uh, today dct very very popular Yeah, uh, in your uh, mobile uh, systems, because this kind of transforms are particularly used. And how this works? Let me see. Ah, oh. ah, oh, yes. Now it is a very simple uh, way of looking at things. One image is there. In the image, we have to for the image will be in pixels. The pixel values are taken with some transforms, and after transforming, we have to quantize because. 1.5 1.6 cannot be written as uh, i cannot take so many decimals because of the restrictions in the memory therefore i have to have a quantizer then we have to encode it then we have to encoding is also very very important how beautifully you are going to encode and reduce the amount of data to be transmitted and the other end you get a compressed image and they can decompress and get the original image uh, at least suppose i have a image here i want to compress this image i have the pixel values for this image all these numbers have come when i take the transform it goes into low frequencies and high frequencies whenever this in the transform the upper part this corner represents the low frequencies the other one is high frequencies suppose if you see the low frequencies will have more values compared to the high frequencies if you go to high frequencies the values are very very less means in the real life the changes are small because low pass frequency if i take the hand a color on the hand will not immediately change that means the variation is less that is why the frequency is for low frequencies we will have bigger numbers compared to the higher frequencies that is how uh, the matrix is formed when you take the transform of the pixels of the given image then when you transform it what you can do is you can see all the numbers from highest to lowest as the number goes from low frequency to high frequency it keeps on reducing it keeps on reducing now what does it indicate the high frequency components are having less contribution to the image therefore what you can do is you can somehow uh, uh, bring it down or remove it that whichever uh, coefficients are not going to contribute to the image for that you have to do some sort of quantization what is this quantization means you have to divide this 
matrix the transform matrix by some numbers how to choose that numbers is our choice that carefully you have to handle so what generally in general i am going to talk divide the big numbers by small numbers so that this big numbers are representing the uh, rep- representing the important contribution to the image that is the low frequency components that should be retained because it contains the information therefore what you can do is divide those first part by smaller numbers higher frequencies by bigger numbers because small number divided by big number will become very small therefore if you observe to the other end the lower frequency numbers are retained high frequencies are all becoming 0000 in the matrix therefore now the whole data has got reduced only to a small rectangle means that much information is construct the entire image therefore this is called the compression so so much of data i have removed and made it a small in number of data which itself can uh, represent your image and then you can start reversing process inverse the dct you can take and you can see the decompressed images so original image decompressed image so here we this is done with uh, jpeg that is uh, uh, today all your images are done with some compressions but we can put our own technique into the compression standards so video compression it requires a little more uh, uh, work into that because there is a motion only image means it is a still picture you may video means it requires motion and of course we have to take the motion estimation and there also we have to do lot of job that is why it becomes a headache if for this one today we have wavelets because four year transforms four year transforms sir professor you can conclude i think the ah. time given is ah mukesh prati sir and finally today i'll end up with this sir Ah, yes. So finally, I'll tell today wavelets are going to <coughs> play an important role in the compression. This with this, I'm going to conclude because Fourier transform works in frequency domain, but it will not give the time information at the same time. Whereas wavelets can give both time and frequency information at one instant. So that is why wavelets are becoming very very popular today. And of course, I am part of that research of wavelets in my. Uh, research work and of course it is something like this somebody should know uh, what somebody may know how to sing but they may not know when to sing how to sing is like a four year trance that is frequency domain when to sing is a time domain they may know how to sing but they don't know when to sing second part is they know when to sing but they don't know how to sing means they are good in time domain not in frequency one is good in frequency not good in time but somebody will know how to sing and when to sing both that is wavelets so today wavelets are going to do a, a very good job and it is going to do lot of compression techniques and of course many methods have come even my own methods are available in the uh, in the google where research papers have produced i think with this i just given how today the climbing has happened and i would like to conclude my talk with all this thank you